Just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away Cause I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. But there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say And I'm proud to be an American this event, I always think back to a time when I was visiting my cousin in North Carolina and he had a baby boy that was three months old and a daughter that was three. And in a month's time, he was about to deploy for 14 months to go overseas and be away from his family, away from his son and away from his daughter. And I, that's just one man, one person, one family who is making a sacrifice like that for his country, for us, and for people. Um, who will, he will never meet and they will never meet him. And I just think about the, the sacrifices that all the, the people who are involved with Suds and everyone here um, and everyone overseas, everyone who has fought for us and all the sacrifices that they have made. And I just want to say thank you all for your sacrifice for us and your service to us. Thank you. Um, you know, it's, it says somewhere that the, the greatest among us, and I think the Monsignor said this something similar, uh, but the greatest among us are those who serve, uh, who put others before them. Um, and there's one of our family uh, who that we lost a couple years back, um, who we would like to honor here today. Um, and it's Steven Siliberto. We all know him as the captain. Um, for those of you who don't know the captain, um, you know, I consider him a great man. Um, anyone who served in World War II and, and was on the beaches of Normandy, I consider a great man. Um, and who made great sacrifices for his country, he put his life on the line uh, for the man standing next to him and the, the person at home. Um, and 
So he was also an ABC cameraman, and for those of you who don't know, he was a vital part of making this Suds event happen, making uh, bringing Suds here and bringing Nick and Ray to Puerto Rico. Um, it's an incredible story uh, where he, he brought them there and they saw the soldiers there with John and seven years later, here we are doing this thing and, um, and it wouldn't, wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for the captain. Um, so, and a man like that who served his entire life and he served his country and he served the people around him in his community until the day he died, until the day he left us. And his service is still being seen now, even after he's gone. Because here we are doing this event, uh, and we're doing it because of the captain. And I consider that a great man who left a great legacy. And um, so in light of all that, uh, I'm going to bring my dad up here, and he's going to sing a song. Um, it's a song that he, uh, he did a couple years ago. We're happy to bring it back. This is Vinnie Bergamo. Well, come on up. It kind of tells the story of how things went. So, uh, and I just want to say, please, guys, don't go too far because John Thompson is going to speak to us right after this. So, here you are, sir. They're going to put the music in here for just a second. But, um, well, here we go. Vincent Bergamo. I faced the final curtain Don't worry cause I'm near End of this You can be certain I see all in my To follow him to Puerto Rico To show him certain things So they could see See what he knows A group of wounded warriors They were sitting
Yes, it was. Uh, well, now I'm uh, very proud to introduce, and I'm not sure if Dan is around. Where's Dan? The, uh, there he is. Um, I'm going to introduce to you a gentleman. Uh, we had talked about men who serve uh, and men who have put others before themselves, and, and that's what I think about this guy. Um, he, uh, yeah, again, um, he had an idea, and uh, he had a, something that he thought, a place that he could help, and he went and did it, and he had the guts to do it. Um, and I think what what I think is one of the greatest things about him is how humble he is, and how uh, what a sense of humility he has, um, because it's not about him, it's about other people. And um, again, I think that's an awesome thing. I, uh, I have a nickname for you now, and I'm gonna call you the Beach Cowboy. Because that's what you remind me of. So let's, uh, let's welcome him up here. He's going to speak to us for a little bit. This is John the Beach Cowboy Thompson. Come on up. That one might stick. First of all, I want to thank the uh, Curry family, Dave, Ray, Laura, Sheila, uh, the Bergamo family, uh, the Peters family, and all the volunteers and all of you for coming out today. Thank you very much. The person on my right, uh, this is Commander Cliff Bruner. We just brought Cliff onto the board of directors this year. Uh, Cliff served his entire career, 22 years as a Navy SEAL, so we're very, very proud to have him. Take it over, Cliff. Also, I'd like to recognize Lieutenant Colonel Michelle Thompson, the mother of my children. I affectionately call the Texas Tornadoes, Ashley and Sophia, sitting right there. A lot of people probably don't know this, but if we hadn't got stationed at Walter Reed in 2005, the SUDS program probably never would have happened. Um, Michelle was accepted into the uh, Armed Forces Institute of Pathology in 05. Without that piece of the puzzle, we wouldn't be here tonight. So I'm very grateful. <laughs> Another uh, pretty sweet piece of news here is a lot of people know Carla Chatterton. She's not here this evening because of what happened down, or what's happening down in Florida with uh, Irma. Um, she's pretty sad she's not here, but we just brought Carla onto the board of directors. It happened a couple of nights ago. We've really prided ourselves on having an all-military or former military board, but Carla's been with us for 10 years. We had a spot open up. It just made sense to bring her in. When we broke the news to her, she broke down crying. It was very heartfelt. So happy to have Carla on board and Cliff. Uh, also this year, we had two veterans that have been in the SUDS program for quite a while actually complete their dive instructor certifications. We've got two guys now that uh, this year, Brett Graveline, who's been to this event several times, and Jace Badia just became dive instructors. Very huge accomplishment. Yeah. I'd like to give you a recap of what 2017 has looked for us so far, so you have an idea of where your money's going. Um, we started the year out down in Puerto Rico. I spent about six months of the year in Rincon, Puerto Rico. And most of the time I'm there, I do what's called a one-on-one. -on -one. I'll bring uh, a veteran down, they'll stay with me for a week, we'll do some one-on-one -on -one training or some kind of advanced training. In fact, a lot of the guys here tonight have been a part of that. It's very unique, something that we do that I don't think, I've never heard of another organization doing it. It's very personable. I can do a lot more things individually than with the group. Um, I think my record is uh, I did 22 one-on-ones last year, so that's over a third of wow. third of the year I've had 24/7. I've had a guy with me. Um, it's a lot of work, but I wouldn't change it. I love I love working with these guys, and it's a very special thing that we do. 
in February, this might be a little strange, but in February, uh, OCO TV, which is the Cherokee Nation, they've got a uh, TV program. They came down to Rincon and profiled uh, the Suds program. I know uh, I look like a full-blood Cherokee, but I, I am I am Cherokee, and that, that's the connection, if you're wondering. But uh, it's a great program. This year they got nominated for six Emmys. Uh, I think last year they won two Emmys, so it's very, very honored that they chose uh, the Suds program to come down and profile. In March, we had uh, a pretty, if you've ever been to Rincon, it's, you know it's a little funky, eclectic, kind of hippie surfer town. So Yari, Nicole, and Isela, unfortunately, are not here tonight, but they put on this event for the last uh, two or three years uh, called Rincon for Suds. And the theme this past year was black tie and flip flops. So we had, we had uh, quite a combination of unique outfits. Uh, so they raised quite a bit of money for us this past March. And then in, uh, in May we went down to Kona, uh, went over to Kona, Hawaii. That's kind of another signature trip for us. Uh, we do a bizarre dive there called the Blackwater Dive, which is uh, it's kind of a pucker dive. We go out at night, uh, about five miles offshore and 5,000 feet of water, and we jump in and we do a dive there, see what comes up. Uh, so we did that, did the Manta Ray Dive there, went and saw Volcanoes National Park, actually got to see the lava spewing up in the air. So that's a really great trip for us. Then uh, later in the month, we went to North Carolina, I used to work there, and it's all shipwrecks and, and sharks, so that's always an exciting dive that we do with the guys. And then uh, in June, uh, we're back in Guantanamo, and that's what puts Suds on the map. Uh, we've been going there every year. We've got huge support at the naval base of Guantanamo Bay. Um, just really love going down there, and it's, it's a new, unique place to bring these guys. In July, we did something we've never done before, and normally we couldn't afford, but I I was uh, I got a call earlier this year from the owner of a ship out in Truck Lagoon, which is on near the island of Chuuk, uh, south of Guam, and he offered to comp our whole trip. So we brought some guys down there and dove these historic Japanese shipwrecks in World War II. It's something we've never done before. I don't know if we'll ever be able to repeat it, but uh, very uh, amazing dive trip there. And for wreck diving, it's the mecca. It's, it was world class diving. I'm going to touch a little bit on this, and I'll follow up with, this, with uh, what happened on this trip. In September, early September, just a few days ago, I just got back from Utah uh, on a backpacking trip with one of our warriors. Uh, at Suds, uh, diving is our primary focus, but we do do a few other things. And so we just wrapped that trip on Tuesday, wrapped it up on Tuesday. And then we've got a few events coming up in Florida, if it's still there next month. So uh, keeping our fingers crossed for that. But I want to talk about perseverance. Uh, it's what I see in all the warriors that are here today, perseverance. Last week I flew to Grand Junction, Colorado uh, with Sergeant Preston Kaplan. And we drove about six hours into the Utah desert to explore a remote canyon in the southern part of the state. It was so remote that we never saw another person on the way in, and we never saw a person on the way out. We were a small three-man team, that was myself, a uh, buddy of mine named Paul, uh, who I used to guide with uh, in the Rocky Mountains and the, and the desert southwest. And then uh, Preston. You might have met Preston, he was here last year. Um, yep. He was kind of the life, life of the party last year. Uh, he's a below the, knee, below the knee amputee, he lost his leg in Iraq. And uh, so we took him out for a little adventure. Our itinerary was stout. The terrain was steep, and the landscape was something out of a National Geographic magazine. Just unbelievable scenery. Just to get into the canyon, we had to set up a number of rappels and fixed lines uh, to lower ourselves and our, our heavy packs down to safety. It took us nine hours just to cover two miles. And that was just on the first day. Once we were about a thousand feet uh, below on the canyon floor, we spent the next few days exploring uh, some of the most beautiful country you can imagine. It was hot and dusty. We drank from muddy, murky potholes. Our camp was raided by a ringtail cat one night. Um, at times, we'd take two steps forward and slide one step back because of the loose sand and rock. We were pelted by grit and sand at night while we tried to sleep. And to get out of the canyon, we had to ascend 1,200 feet, almost vertical, 
sometimes on our hands and knees while we're heavy, carrying heavy packs. I'm often amazed at the perseverance of our nation's warriors and their never quit attitude. They were fighters on the battlefield and they continue to be fighters off the battlefield. As we completed our journey, it came to me that Preston was most likely the first amputee to ever complete this hard, arduous route. In fact, I bet all my dive gear on it. It was a hell of a trip. I'd like to recognize the warriors that are here today. If you can stand up or raise your hand. Yancey Taylor, United States Army Green Beret. Scuba Steve, Steve Mallets, United States Air Force. Chris Cowan and his service dog Loki. Where are you at, Chris? My Russian buddy, Igor Makarov, United States Army. Adam McCann, United States Marine Corps. Dan the man, the ladies man, Dan Costa, where you at, Dan? There he is. Richie Dominguez, United States Army. This guy's been with the program since the very beginning. Very proud to have Shane Heath here, United States Army. Ready second airborne. Gonzo, where you at? Gonzalo Duran, United States Marine Corps. Jose, I don't see you. Jose Valdenegro, there you are. <laughs> Mr. Chosen, Tim Payne, United States Army. <laughs> and it's hammer time. Mike Collins. Hey, what are you doing over there, Mike? Michael Collins, calling you out. Michael Collins, United States Army. Stand up, Mike. That's the hammer, MC Hammer. <laughs> Folks, thank you. Hey, I'll be seeing you later. <laughs> yeah, we'll have Shane and Mike up here with the band later this evening. I'm very honored and proud to be here for the seventh year. Um, we've got our 10th year anniversary coming up. Um, in October. I can't believe it. It went by in a flash. Uh, so thank you for coming out and let's get this party started.